Last class, did they have presentation? In Damodar, did they have presentations? Damodar? Yeah. What presentations? You know how we do presentations? Were they doing that? Oh, we are not doing now. We'll be starting. So you're missing that? Yeah. Okay. If, if Advait is missing, we'll start it back. Thank you, Natalie. So are you ready to do presentation? Already Suraj uh, said that he wants to go first. After that, I'll put your name on. Okay, Ajay. Hari Bol. So Radhika Mataji. Yes, Mataji. Mataji, you are muted, Mataji. Oh, sorry. Can we get started, Mataji? Yes, yes, Mataji, please, with the prayers. Okay. All right. Thank you, kids, for joining. Let's get started with our prayers. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Nyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Vum Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashraj Pradesha Tarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shri Vasadi Kaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Thank you Thank you all All right Who's doing what for Janmashtami? Maki at LA Temple we're having so at the LA Temple whenever there's like a big festival like uh Snanayata or some or Prabhupada festival. Um, they close the streets. Uh, they close the streets here and they put up all stalls and everything. And then at like 10 o'clock at night, I think they <coughs> we usually have like a drama of a lot of people. Um, Janmasami drama. But this year we're not having drama. This Prabhu, we did a drama last year, and this Prabhu he animated everything, and we're gonna watch it as a movie. Wonderful. Really great to hear. So are you participating in that uh, Janmashtami, like, uh, you know, uh, up until 12 o'clock? And are you I'll, going to... I'll try, Mataji. <laughs> okay, wonderful. How about you, Mukund? Yes, Mataji, I'm also participating in the drama. Oh, okay, great. What about Beatrice? What are you doing for Janmashtami? Okay, I don't hear it from you. Uh, Samskriti, what about you, dear? Um, Mataji, I'll just go to the temple and like um, serve um, the food there. Oh, so, oh, wonderful, wonderful service. Hi, Beatrice. Do you want to say what you're going to do? Um, usually every Thursday, and and every Sunday when I can, um, we go to the temple and stay there for a while and drive back home. Oh, where are but, you located? But, but they're um, 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 like setting up for tomorrow. So uh -huh. tomorrow instead of today, we are. Wonderful. So, but where are you located? Which place? Like, which city are you from? What? Which city are you from? We live in Ithaca. Okay, Ithaca. Wonderful. Okay, well, how about... They said, Mataji, last time when we asked, she said, uh, near New York, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Salt Lake City. I've, uh, I've actually um, been to... Are you close to that Sarnak Lake or... Is that... Uh, is, is it closer to you by any chance? Saranak Lake? I don't know. So I've, I've been to that area, Beatrice, where you live uh, for my projects. So I'm kind of familiar with that idea. I mean, with the place, but it's been long time since I've been to New York. So Devi, what about you, dear? 
Mataji, I'm thinking to read the whole Krishna book at my home, Mataji. And chant just some lot of rounds. Oh, so sweet of you, darling. So sweet of you. Krishna will be very pleased with all of you. It's uh, it's just uh, Krishna. I mean, we are so fortunate under association and get inspiration from each other, right? And uh, you've all inspired me. So I'll also try to do something for Janmashtami, like you all. <laughs> Tomorrow I'm taking a day off. So it's a, it's a relief. No work. <laughs> That's good for me. Yes, Mataji. <laughs> yeah, it feels so good, you know. If you have work, you have to look at emails, see if there are follow-ups, see if I have to, you know, contact somebody at work. And uh, that pressure is always there. When there is no... Yay, jolly. So tomorrow, my um, boss asked me, actually, you know what happened? My, I happened to schedule a meeting. I mean, I have a scheduled meeting on Friday. I happened to do that today. So she asked me, what are you going to, are you planning to take your time off tomorrow? She's also an Indian. So she asked me. And I told, yeah, yeah, I don't mind taking time off like that. Till then, it was not planned. She, since she asked me, I told her, yes, I'll have time off. Okay, so we have Nitiksh. Nitiksh, is it? What are you doing for Janmashtami, Nitiksh? Okay. How about Vinita Gandharvika Mataji? Or uh, Vrinda? Mataji, we are, we are celebrating at home uh, uh, this Janmashtami. Uh -huh. But then uh, we will go to uh, temple on Saturday for Srila Prabhupada appearance. Yeah, and uh, Mataji, Mataji, uh, today is my mom's anniversary. Oh, really? Happy anniversary to Vinita Gandharvika Mataji. Mataji, this girl, you know, she just... Happy anniversary, oh, Mataji. Thank she you, wants thank everybody, all the Krishna conscious uh, devotees to wish you. That's why. Very nice. If anything... Mataji, Mataji, now that Vinita Gandharvika Mataji reminded me, on Saturday also we have the streets are going to be closed. Oh, wow, that's nice. I'd like it's you fun know, because all the kids come and uh, there's like scooters or bikes or skateboards or something like that on the road. We're oh, not nice. used to doing that. Okay, very nice. That's uh, And people are cooperative also about it, isn't it? They're all uh, kind of okay with that particular thing. And Advait, you're showing your video for the first time. I think I'm seeing you for the first time today. Never well, seen it's, your... been a, it's been a long time since I turned on my video, that's why. Yeah, I don't think I ever see or saw you, but today is kind of the first day you've given me your darshan. Uh, so anyway, so what, what about today? Today is a special day. Let's look into that. Uh, it's been such a long time since uh, we've had Govinda classes and today it's the first class for all of us. So let's all uh, listen to the story so that we can be prepared for our Krishna's appearance tomorrow. Okay. All right. So let me continue with our story from 10th Canto so that you can all listen to that and uh, see if you all uh, are able to, uh, you know, obviously you know the story. So we can all discuss after the story, what are some takeaways? What are things that you like about the pastime? And like that, we can discuss some things. Okay. So let's get started, kids. One minute. I think Machi got disconnected.
I'm sorry, my elder son has a class. So I kind of reminded him about the class. I had to get down and take care of that. Anyways, uh, so the first slide, it talks about Parikshit eagerness to listen to Krishna Katha. What is he saying? Uh, Sukadev is saying, Parikshit, you should rest for a while. You've not at all taken rest. You're going on listening to Krishna Katha. You've not drank anything. You have not eaten anything. Could you mind taking some rest so that you're not troubled by listening to Krishna Katha? So, but Parikshit Naraj, he says, no, I'm not at all troubled. I'm drinking the Bhagavat Rasa. I'm actually drinking the fruit and the nectar by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. Why are you asking me to go and take some water, take some food? No, no, this itself is so nourishing for me. I don't want to go or move out or walk out of the place. Can you please, uh, you know, tell me more Krishna Katha? Like that, Parikshit Maharaj was eager to listen to Krishna Katha. He wants to listen on and on and on. He doesn't get bored. Does anybody here not get bored? of hearing Krishna Katha or doing some Krishna conscious activities. Oh, you know what? Amma, it's been long time. See, I've heard the Krishna Katha for 15, 15 minutes. Such it's a long I've time. I've done it too many times. You got bored too many No, Mataji, if I've uh, done uh, some Krishna conscious activity like too many times, like uh, in a day, then like uh, I feel like that. Or yeah, like yeah, yeah. Uh, stories like uh like um Krishna conscious stories like uh when my mom says uh, do you want to hear a story and then she talks about what well, the Agasura pastime uh, I already know it so like I feel yeah. like yeah, yeah. You already know the story and you're saying your mom, mom, I'm done. I know the story already. I know what's going to happen next. I'm kind of familiar with the story. Why are you actually bugging me? <laughs> Isn't it? But anyways, but Parikshit Maharaj, even though he knew everything, he was not getting bored. That is the, because he's learning new, new realizations come to him because of which he wants to enjoy the nectar more and more and more. This is what was going on with Parikshit Maharaj. And he doesn't feel like drinking and uh, eating because that's a waste of time, isn't it? He has only seven days. In that seven days, he wants to completely engage his mind and be absorbed in Krishna Katha. So this is what he wanted to do. And that is what he's doing. And he's relishing the activity. Okay. Rel relishing the activity with so much bliss and so much taste he has got to the process of hearing. Now, let's move on. Once Mother Earth approaches Lord Brahma because of over overburdened by military flanks of demons, Mother Earth assumed the form of a cow. In a distressful condition, she appeared before Lord Brahma. Thereafter, Lord Brahma with Mother Earth, Lord Shiva and all other demigods approached the shore of the ocean of the milk. All of them worshipped the Lord and recited Purusha Shukta prayers. They were all overburdened, okay, because of the demoniac uh, uh, mentality of people. Everybody was overburdened and Mother Earth in the form of cow, she appeared before Brahma and all of them, Brahma, Vishnu, Bra, sorry, Brahma. Uh, huh. Yeah, So, she was uh, overburdened and all of them along with Brahma, Mother Earth and Shiva, they all went to whom? Lord Vishnu. And they recited what? Purusha Shukta prayers. Whoever it is, can you please mute? It's Okay, Nikunz will mute. I don't know where it is. Where is he? Nikunz, can you mute dear? Okay, so now they all went to Brahma and they pleaded, Brahma, Brahma, please help me. Like that, Mother Earth pleaded to Brahma. And all of them, Brahma, Shiva and uh, Mother Earth, who did they go to? They went to Lord Vishnu. And what did they pray? I mean, how did they pray? They prayed Purusha Shukta prayers. Okay. And now, Brahma conveys the order of the Supreme Lord to the demigods. Brahma Ji was able to find out what was in the mind of Lord Vishnu. So how was he able to find out? Because he was in trance. What is trance means? Do you know, anybody knows what is trance? What is this trance that we are talking about? How Not Brahma Ji is able exactly. to know? Huh? Advait, what do you mean? What is trance, dear? I don't know exactly, but I know like in Jagannath pastime, the, hmm. the Brahmachari or Brahmana, they go into that temple 
um, and they go in trance, meaning like they sleep, they have no conscience, they don't have a consciousness, but they're mm. still alive. Yeah, and, like, yeah. They completely, their mind is completely absorbed uh, in the thoughts of Vishnu. That's that's how he's able to read the mind of Vishnu. What what uh, what did he? Uh, I mean, when you are in trance, you are completely absorbed. That is just uh, mm, that one objective thought. Uh, and uh, you're completely in that state where you're not disturbed by any kind of material activities. So many material activities may take place, but you're not disturbed by it. This is this is what a person in trance is capable of doing. He has his consciousness. The consciousness is alive, as uh, Advait said. He is al alive, he is conscious, uh, but then he's unaware of the material things that are happening because he's completely absorbed in the thoughts of the Lord. Okay, this is trance. So while in trance, Lord Brahma hears from the Supreme Lord Vishnu. Lord Brahma repeated the message to the demigod. Since he heard while he was in trance from what uh, Vishnu wanted, so he actually conveyed that message to the demigods. Lord already knows about the condition on the earth, he said. He requested all of you to appear in the Yadu and Krishna dynasties. See, you all demigods, what do you do? I want you to see Krishna is going to come to the earth because we see demoniac tendencies in the earth. He knows about the condition of the earth. And what you demigods are supposed to do? You are supposed to appear uh, in the Yadu and Rishni dynasties. This is what is the instruction from Lord Krishna. And then all the wives of the demigods should also appear in order to satisfy him. So previous to the appearance of Lord Krishna, this original Sankarshana will appear as Baladev just to please Lord Krishna. We all know Balram's appearance day just has passed, isn't it? So Baladev actually appeared before Krishna to facilitate the arrival of Krishna. Okay. And uh, this, uh, this, uh, this is what is uh, being told in Srimad Bhagavatam. Now, just to kind of give you a recap, what has happened so far is that Mother Earth, what did she do? She went, went, uh, went to Brahma in the form of a cow. And she told to Brahma about the condition of the earth, how people are so demoniac. And then Brahma, along with the Mother Earth and Shiva, they went to Lord Vishnu and they did recite Purusha Sukta prayers. After reciting Purusha Sukta prayers, what happened? Brahma was able to hear what the Lord, what Lord Vishnu's thoughts were due to the due to him being in trance. He was able to see what is Lord Vishnu's, uh, what what did Lord Vishnu say? And then he actually conveyed that message that was being communicated to him through trance to all the demigods. And he told all the demigods. What did he tell? Hey, hey, demigods, please listen to me. You are supposed to appear. He knows about what is going on in the earth. He knows about the demoniac tendencies. And that is why he's planning to appear in, in the earth. And you demigods, you are supposed to also appear along with him in the Yadu and Krishna dynasties. And demigods, wives, you are also going to appear in order to satisfy who? Lord Krishna. And previous to the appearance of Krishna, we are going to have somebody else. Special appearance is going to be made by uh, Lord Baladev. He is going to appear before Krishna just to please Krishna. And just to facilitate the arrival of Lord Krishna, Baladev was going to arrive. This is what is the scenario. Are you all clear so far? Varun, you just arrived. Are you clear, dear? Yes. Hmm. Yes. Uh, everybody else, are you all okay? Any questions so far? No, Mataji. Okay. So now, Maharaj of Devaki and Vasudev. Sukadev De Goswami, he continued. Thus, after advising to the demigods, Lord Brahma, where did he go? Where is his abode? His abode is in Brahma Loka. He went to Satya Loka. And then Shurashen, the chief of Yadu, had gone to live in the city of Mathura. Mathura became the capital of the Yadus, where Krishna lives eternally. Kamsa, the son of Ugrasen, in order to please his sister Devaki on the occasion of his marriage, became the charity chariot driver. So what did Kamsa do during that uh, uh, marriage time of Vasudev and Devaki? He actually became the chariot driver in order to please Devaki. And he gave so much dowry. So like when a bride is given to the bridegroom, the bride's family usually gives something called dowry. Okay. And this dowry included 400 elephants, 10,000 horses, 1,800 chariots, 200 maid servants, fully decorated with ornaments. Can you believe it? In even to have one maidservant is so difficult for all of us. But Kamsa was able to give this as dowry to Vasudev. Okay? Because Devaki was... Yeah. 
one maid servant six hundred dollars a week or day, <laughs> maybe even day. Oh, uh, well, yeah, I don't know about that. Six hundred seems a lot. Uh, but anyways, I think per week maybe it is. It's not six hundred per day. Okay. But anyway, this is. I heard a lecture. Well, hmm. it was a Krishna, like uh, Krishna Bas name, and it was a Brahmana that was trying to get the daughter married, and. Amarinda Prabhu was talking about dowry, and he said that dowry used to be like a custom. So it's like I'm sending my um, daughter, and I'm also sending these gifts. But then after that, dowry became like you have to send. I think Matuji got. It. So what's the actual point of dowry? It's just like, for example, like you're sending your daughter to the um opposite side, right? So along with the daughter, you're also sending like various gifts as to saying like thank uh, you and stuff. Thank you and like yeah, stuff like that. And oh, okay. dowry used to be like you didn't have to do it, but then after everyone started doing it, they made it a you have to do it. It used to oh. be a custom. Okay, so now you have to waste your money even if you don't want to. I mean, even if you no, the thing is, um, the other person doesn't waste Mary money. Um, it's the person whose daughter. So it's the daughter's See, side. It's it's yeah, it's, exactly. it's, it is not a waste of money, Suraj. It's kind of going to help them. The, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, them. I give a gift, but like I wouldn't give like six hundred horses else. No, no, no. For them, it was not a big deal. They were rich. They were very very wealthy. The maid servants were actually like friends of the queen, and they send it along with the queen. Yeah, so that she can have a good time. Well, yeah, and they will serve them as necessary, okay? Anyways, we will move on. Okay, now an unembodied voice speaks and Kamsa is going to respond. Many auspicious sounds were made when they were departing from there. Suddenly, an unembodied voice addressed Kamsa. You foolish rascal, the eight child of the woman you are carrying will kill you. Sinful Kamsa took the sword and he was ready to chop Devaki's head. Oh my God! Somebody is going to kill me. That is the eighth child born from Devaki Zoom is going to kill me. I'm not going to get the, keep this Devaki alive. Let me just chop her head off right now. See how much affectionate he was mm, till that point of time when he till before he heard that uh, thing. So much he was becoming a charity driver. He was giving so much dowry and everything. And all of a sudden, because somebody was going to kill him, his mind changed automatically and he was going to just chop Devaki's head off. There's no affection after all, right? Now, uh, so now Vasudev was, uh, Vasudev had to take an intelligent move in order to save Devaki, isn't it? By seeing Kamsa's persistence to kill Devaki, Vasudev had other plans to stop Kamsa. Uh, see, he has to use his intelligence mind. As long as one has intelligence, one should avoid death. If death is unavoidable, then there is no offense. So now, at the moment, he was thinking, let me just save Devaki. That is what I need to do. So Vasuda, Vasudev, he told Kamsa, you know what, let me hand over my sons to you, Kamsa. And as a result of it, the immediate threat, which is now uh, being uh, shot upon Devaki, will go away. It will go solved. Mm, the immediate threat is going to be solved. If I'm going to hand over who, who, how many of our sons I get, I will just go uh, come and give it to you. This is what I promise I will do. Please don't kill my wife. So this is what is the result, he said. To Kamsa. And then in order to please Kamsa, Vasudev externally smiled. Vasudeva said, uh, oh, the best of the sober, you have nothing to fear from Devaki. The cause of the death will be her sons. I promise when she gives birth to the sons from the womb, you fear has arisen, I shall deliver them onto your hands. Srila Sukadev Goswami continued, Kamsa refrained from killing Devaki. So see how intelligently Kamsa, uh, how intelligently Vasudev proposed the plan to Kamsa so that he doesn't kill Devaki at the moment. Meaning, what did he tell Kamsa? Kamsa, don't worry, Devaki is not going to kill you. Only Devaki's sons are going to kill you. In that case, what I will do, I will just hand over the sons whenever they are born. I'll just come and hand them over to you. This is what I'll do. In this way, you don't have to fear of your death. Okay. 
is this proposal good to this proposal kamsa said yes yes it is very good i agree so like that kamsa and then agreed to the plan devaki gave birth one child each year vasudev delivered the first son krithiman in the hands of kamsa kamsa felt very happy and spoke to vasudev as follows kamsa asked vasudev to take the child back but then vasudev agreed and then after that he thought oh my god you know i'm agreeing after that kamsa's mind will change so it's better that i give this uh, child to kamsa even though he gives it back to me i don't want to carry this child back home because he will change his mind and do something else which we really won't anticipate so it's better i just give this it's okay you go nothing i go and um, I, it's better that i don't trust the character of kamsa like that he said now narada muni is coming into picture okay mm, narada muni is saying to kamsa kamsa all the demigods have appeared in the dynasties of yadus and others any child might be the cause of your death so this is what he said he just put a blanket statement to say see all of them appeared all the demigods have appeared in the yadu dynasty what are you doing you know any child may kill you at any moment no if somebody says because the unembodied voice has said na the eighth child of devaki is going to kill uh, um, kill you kamsa so his fear even further increased oh my god what do you mean narada muni is that true is that true let me uh, you know his fear because of his fear he may just end up in an atrocious activities he may start doing things that are not favorable isn't it whenever somebody increases a fear in you we may start behaving in a weird way because of that fear if you have noticed say for example it's your exam time and if somebody is going on bothering you going on disturbing you you will get angry you will get frustrated you will behave in a very weird way because you have not studied for your exam and somebody is not allowing you to do, do so it could be your mind it could be others it could be you yourself is going on in you so we have to be so like that nata muni actually arose the anxiety of kamsa and kamsa he imprisons due to that anxiety and fear what did he do he imprisoned vasudev and devaki and killed all the six children greedy kings what will, what can they do they can kill even mothers fathers brothers even friends for selfish motivation see this is very important for selfish means what it's just me and mine if i'm i'm going to be troubled if i'm going to die if somebody is cause going to cause uh death to me then i'm ready to kill anybody for that sake for that anybody i don't care if it's my mother if it's my father if it's my friend or if it is anybody for that matter i'm ready to kill them because i'm selfish this is what was the attitude of kamsa he didn't actually mind he was just immediately going to chop off devaki's head because he was in trouble he was going to be killed kamsa he became envious of the people in the yadu dynasty and finally kamsa in imprisons who ugrasen are technically is kamsa in the yadu dynasty Ka- uh, see kamsa is uh, see kamsa is not see, kamsa, is kamsa, kamsa is ugrasen's son kamsa and kamsa is ugrasen's son right yeah ugrasen's son he was born to padmavati and he was going to imprison his dad also that's what is being said here in the 67th purport if you look into it he was ready to do anything even his mother he was going to ready to kill anybody for that matter because his he was under trouble because of yeah, that yeah but like, isn't he still part of the yadu dynasty for example it's like this um if there's a kid and there's a family but the family doesn't want see, i don't think ugrasen okay. had a great uh, relationship with uh, comes up for that matter because he was being a very so nef- yeah, was- krishna only appointed him as a king see he was given the role of a king and he said i really don't want to be the king uh, and he gave that post to ugrasen and uh, so uh, so from that perspective ugra i mean they didn't have a co- sort of cordial relationship he didn't have a cordial relationship with his father so as to speak okay yes so krishna was devaki's uh son and yeah Ugrasen, and uh, ugrasen kamsa. ugrasen and padmavati padmavati was the mother of kamsa ugrasen to uh, ugrasen and padmavati kamsa was born okay yeah okay thank you so this was the kamsa's uh, hmm, i mean this was all the kamsa, kamsa's uh, thing and after that uh, we would definitely see the arrival of lord krishna 
So tomorrow is when uh, we will hear more stories from all the speakers uh, in Bhakti Sangha Japa as well. It, even though it's for adults, you can uh, stories on the advent of Lord Krishna in the sense- But market tomorrow's Janmashtami. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Appearance of Lord Krishna's story and Krishna's past times will be discussed Man, tomorrow. Pichy, tomorrow is Janmashtami, so like, um, it is, we have pension here, right, Mataji? Yeah, what, what? Did you, we have no, 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 we don't have a kids' too. class tomorrow. I don't think there is kids' class tomorrow. I'm not sure. No, I know, but even for the adults' class, we huh? have festival here, right? So how will we join? Oh, you have festival in the temple, right? Okay. Yeah, I told you, right? They close the streets and everything. Yeah, yeah. For us now, we don't have a temple here. So evening only our program starts. So morning time, we can definitely listen if there is something. But morning, I have school. Yeah, you have school. Yes, advice. You are in the seventh grade or eighth grade? Uh, I'm in eighth. You're in the eighth grade. Okay, wonderful. Good job. Anyway, so you all have a good Janmashtami tomorrow and do all your things that you just promised that you'll be doing. Uh, I also pray that I'll be able to do something like you all. Uh, be absorbed in thinking about Krishna, meditating about Krishna and things like that. Okay, please pray for me as well. And uh, you all have a happy Janmashtami and uh, happy, uh, I'm, I'm sure uh, your, your moms are making a lot of prasad for Janmashtami day. So definitely don't miss out on that as well. Okay. Mataji. Yeah. I made, I made cookies today. Oh, great. What kind of cookies? Sugar cookies. Sugar cookies. Very nice. Very nice. Good job. No much sugar cookies. Oh, Prabhupada's sugar cookies, wonderful for his appearance, I mean, for his appearance day. It's for Krishna Janmashtami and uh, Srila Prabhupada appearance day. Okay, wonderful, dear, wonderful. Okay, so we'll all adjourn for today. I don't know if uh, we have a moral story class, maybe. Mataji, Vinita? Mataji, I don't know. I don't know if uh, uh, Ratnavali Mataji is available. I don't see any message from her. And we have anyway low strength, right? Uh, okay, no problem, Mataji. I, I I don't mind. So it was a good class, all of you all kids. So maybe we will have the next class on Monday. Is it, Mataji? Mataji, could you tell us a story? Um, what what story, dear? Moral stories, Mataji. Moral story. Okay, I I didn't actually do anything on that. One minute, let me. Maybe one story. Is it okay? Okay. Hmm. Let me see. Hey, can we do this uh, Prabhupada life story? Is it long? Yeah, can we have a giant story? Hello. Hello. Actually, I haven't uh, thought of this before, but like maybe we could watch the Prabhupada movie. Yeah, on like Monday. <laughs> Hello. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, I got disconnected, kids. So, do you want to do Panchatantra? Okay. The Brahmin and the goat. Okay, let's see that story. Is it long? Uh, yeah. I'm not sure. It's like some guy comes by with a goat for sacrifice, and these uh, guys say, "Hey, is it a dog?" And oh, you know the story. Say, hey, is it a cat? And uh, some guys are like, "Hey, is that a monkey?" Yeah. I don't know that. I haven't read that story, dear. I don't know what you're saying, but. Yeah, I'm talking about the Brahman and goats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do another story then. Ekabuddhi? What's Ekabuddhi? 
that's the story name okay, okay let me quickly do that story and then we can adjourn okay okay mm, how to share now okay let me share the screen share screen okay so this is eka buddhi story all right so the two fish named shata buddhi and sahasra buddhi lived together with a frog named eka buddhi and his wife in a shallow pond one evening two fishermen passed by the pond they saw a beautiful fish and decided to catch them since it was dark they decided to come back the next morning on hearing this eka buddhi hurried to his friends did you hear that we better flee from here before they come in the morning <laughs> Sita Sata Buddhi replied, "Certainly not. We will stay on. Anything can happen. They might even not come tomorrow. And even if they come, even if they do come, I know thousands of tricks by which I can save all four of us. No, Eka Buddhi, we should not abandon our home for fear of words of some fisherman." This is what that Sata Buddhi said. The frog, Eka Buddhi. Eka Buddhi was a cautious frog. He didn't want to take a chance. He said. the only trick i know is to foresee danger and act accordingly he left to a safer safer place with his wife okay he didn't care about the fish fish's words he just thought oh i will just do whatever i think is fair enough because these people are going to come and catch tomorrow it's better since i've heard it i better act with caution so he went along with his wife he even said to the fish so that the fishes also come along with him so that they are protected this shows the good mentality of this frog ekabuti next morning the two fishermen came and spread their net in the pond after that what happened sata buddhi and shastra buddhi along with the other sea animals caught see all of them caught caught poor shata buddhi he tried very hard but he could not escape from the net or help his fellow fish very much it is he he he's, he was able trying very hard he knew they were going to come but he was thinking he was just foolishly thinking he can just help uh, not only himself but also others but uh, nothing worked out in his favor the fishermen were very happy with the catch especially shata buddhi and sahasra buddhi were very very big in size and would fetch a good price what were they going to do they were going to sell them in the market right eventually they will kill if they are out of water the fishes all will be killed see how the fishermen are happy seeing looking at the lot of fishes in the net they are all very happy they are going to kill them and then eventually eat them fry them and eat them so as the fisherman walked away eka buddhi who was hiding nearby with his wife said but for my cautious nature we too would have been in the basket that is why prevention is better than cure see we are all caught in the net of maya isn't it how many of you all are intelligent all of you who are on the call everybody here is intelligent because you all want to come out of the net of maya the illusion that is conquered us and we want to yeah. act in a very nice way so this is what we want to do like that the fishes uh, the uh, the frogs are actually giving us a caution we have to always be cautious against maya if somebody is going to tempt us with something we should not be allured by that we should always remember krishna and try to serve krishna always this is what we should not forget and that is what this frog is reminding us of every time we have to be careful about maya and not be uh, captivated by the alluring things this material world has to offer us if we are allured by it then we will forget about krishna we will be very very uh, in that illusory world we'll be uh, tempted to do things that are against krishna consciousness which is wrong yes bia are we going to make something not today we are going to end the class after this one okay Yeah, good, good point. So, baby, what are you eating from that time? Pasta, Mati ji. Oh, pasta! I was thinking it was a sweet for some reason. <laughs> I thought you were eating some halwa. <laughs> I like your smile. So that's what I was thinking. Anyways, so can we all adjourn? Did you all like the story? prevention is better than cure 
and we have to always be cautious about maya okay we should always in order for us to be absorbed in krishna we have to be as well and whenever somebody says something wrong we should not be captivated by that words and we should teach them oh this is wrong what you're saying is wrong we have to do the right thing and this is the right thing like that we have to teach them if they don't listen no problem we just carry on with what we need to do okay all right kids are you all okay can we all adjourn for today are you happy suraj is suraj there or yes, not teach oh you are happy good good Mataji, I can't hear. What happened? No. I can't hear anyone. Is that the same thing for everyone? Mataji, I couldn't hear Mataji. Yeah, now yeah, yeah. I can. Yeah, I know my internet connection is unstable today. But anyways, we will adjourn. Vancha kalpataru vyasya kripa sundu vyasya. Bye, 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 b